Um, doctor, if you were a betting man, uh, when would you bet that we would uh, time and that we would have a vaccine? That's a very difficult question to answer. I know that there are companies in, in academic labs working very hard. Um, it, normally it takes up to 10 years to make a vaccine. We've, we've done it faster in emergency situations, but from uh, when we had starting material in the freezer for Ebola, but for a novel virus, it's, it's actually haven't been done yet that quickly. So a lot of optimism is swirling around a, a 12 to 18 month time frame. If everything goes perfectly, we've never seen everything go perfectly. My concern is if we rush too quickly and consider cutting out critical steps, we may not have a full assessment of the safety of that vaccine. So it's still going to take some time. I still think 12 to 18 months is an aggressive schedule, and I think it's going to take longer than that to do so. 12 to 18 months from now, or 12 to 18 months from when this all started at the beginning of the year? It would be 12 to 18 months from when the particular manufacturers first received the material or information that they needed to start developing that vaccine. It's critical to note when we say 12 to 18 months, that doesn't mean for an FDA approved vaccine. That means to have sufficient data and information on the safety and immunogenicity, if not efficacy, to be able to use on an emergency basis. And that is the consideration that we, are, we have in mind when we talk about an accelerated timeline. Thank you. Uh, I uh, represent um, in New York, Bronx County, and Westchester County, which are at the epicenter of the U.S. Uh, coronavirus outbreak, New Rochelle, New York. Um, while New Yorkers have really rallied together and supported their neighbors, um, the administration has um, failed at every turn. The president has uh, sidelined our best scientists pushed baseless conspiracy theories, and more recently prescribed unproven remedies like Lysol to suffering Americans. Since the early days of the outbreak, the President encouraged doctors to prescribe chloroquine to suffering Americans despite a lack of evidence supporting its use. On April 24th, the President's hand-picked FDA commissioner even came out against the use of chloroquine for COVID-19 cases. Doctor, what are the dangers of chloroquine if prescribed incorrectly? And what happened when you raised the issue of chloroquine use in coronavirus patients with HHS leadership? Congressman, our concern centered around the, the potential use of chloroquine in people who were infected with this coronavirus. There are data of uh, the effective use and safe use of chloroquine in malaria patients and other patients and other indications we also knew that there were potential safety risks with chloroquine to cause irregular heart, irregular heart rhythms and even in some cases death. So our concern was with limited information and knowledge, especially of its use in COVID-19 infected patients and the potential for those risks. Then we should uh, make sure that any studies with that drug were done in a carefully controlled clinical study under close watchful eye of a physician so they could respond to a patient if they did experience one of those adverse events. There wasn't sufficient data at that time to support use of this drug in patients with COVID-19 without close physician supervision. And when you raise that issue of uh, chloroquine use in coronavirus patients with HHS leadership, uh, what happened to you? You were re removed as a director of BARDA. Is that, is that not true? I believe part of the removal process for me was as, as initiated because of a push back that I gave when they asked me to put in place an expanded access protocol that would make chloroquine more freely available to Americans that were not under the close supervision of a physician and may not even be confirmed to be infected with the coronavirus. The scientists at FDA, BARDA, and NIH, and CDC worked hard to switch that to an emergency use authorization with strict guardrails that the patients would be in a hospital confirmed to be infected with this virus under close supervision of a doctor and who could not otherwise participate in a randomized controlled study. My concerns were alleviated somewhat by being able to lock that in the stockpile with those conditions. However, my concerns were escalated 
when I learned that leadership in the Department of Health and Human Services were pushing to make that drug available outside of this emergency use authorization to flood New York and New Jersey with this drug, regardless of the EUA. And when I spoke outside of our government and shared my concerns for the American public, that I believe was a straw that broke the camel's back and escalated my removal. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Gentlemen's time has expired.